Hey y'all, welcome back to our five day design workshop. Today I'm excited to share with you just some basic principles around design. So that way, even if you are not professionally trained, your designs will look like you've gone to graphic design school. So let's go ahead and let's dive in. Now, I wanna start this off where we are talking a little bit about fonts. Now, I'm gonna share a couple insights Insider secrets with you on how to successfully pair fonts and not spend hours and hours doing it. But before we get there, I want to talk about just some basic design rules when you are creating. Okay, so there's kind of three basic design rules to give you a little bit of a framework for when you go to start creating your own files. So let's go ahead and let's talk about them. So those three guidelines are number one. In your design, you wanna make sure that you don't have any more than three fonts. Three fonts is kind of the maximum. Now, sometimes, depending on what you're creating, there's exceptions to every rule, and you might have like a subway style design that has a gazillion different types of fonts, so then you throw that rule out the window. But typically, when you're creating, you wanna to stick to no more than three fonts. You also wanna create balance in your design. Now, balance doesn't always mean symmetry, but it just means you wanna make sure it's even on both sides. And then the third design basic guideline that I wanna give you today is I want you to work in odd numbers. So in your design elements, you typically wanna have one, three, five. When you're working in those odd numbers, it really helps your eye kind of flow through the design rather than feeling like everything has to be completely paired up. So let's look at a few of these examples in action. Action. So this is a design that's available inside of Club Chaos, my monthly membership where I provide digital files for crafters with cutting machines. But let's use this one as an example. So if you'll notice, I've got less than three fonts there. I've got a little bit of balance going on. So you can see on this side, even though I've got that Santa hat, it kind of comes down and fills in that space next to that J. And then down here where that K sticks out, I've got a little balance of a swirl there as well as as one on the top. So again, we're not symmetrical here, but we're creating balance and flow for the eye. And then you can also see that those hearts are in odd numbers, right? I've got one Santa hat, I've got three swirls, I've got three hearts. Here's another tip for you as well. You can sneak repetition into your design and that will also create a nice statement when you're creating. So you can see again, the repetition of the hearts, the color red and those swirl, um, kind of those like swirly marks that I've drawn on the top and on the bottom. So let's look at that example. Um, this kind of gives you an overview of those basic guidelines. But like I mentioned, there are exceptions to every single rule. I kind of mentioned that subway art style, and this would be an example of that. So you'll notice here, I've got a whole bunch of different fonts, much more than three. I've, oh, I do use the rule of odd numbers. So I've got one star on there, but you'll just notice that it's a little bit of, um, more impactful because I have multiple fonts. But if I just had four and it looked awkward, it wouldn't flow so well. So make sure if you're going to use a whole bunch of different fonts and you're creating designs that are that subway art style, just make sure you have enough so that it looks like you were supposed to have that many, if that makes sense. Okay, let's keep going through. So I wanna talk now, I've given you three basic design rules that you should stick to as you're creating. I wanna give you three really specific ways that you can pair fonts. So that way you can say, okay, I wanna create a design today, I'm gonna to pair, make this pair. And you're not sitting there for hours trying to figure out what to do. So the first, pair that I want to share with you is when you partner up a serif font and a sans serif font. Now a serif font is the font that has kind of all these little edges on it. You'll notice like all of the edges have like a little lip on them. Okay, that's serif. And then sans serif, you'll notice there's no lips on them. It's very smooth and very, it doesn't have that extra little piece to it. Typically serif fonts are a little bit more formal 
Um, but keep an eye out for that. When you pair a serif and a sans serif font, they typically go really well together. And a lot of times you can get these in a bundle where the designer has made that same font in both of those two options. So let's look at an example of this in action. Again, this is a design from inside of my membership. You can notice across the top and across the bottom, I've got that serif font. And then in the middle, I have the sans serif font where there's no lips on any of those letters. Okay. So let's keep going. So that's font pair example number one, pair a serif font with a sans serif font. Option two, this is one of my favorites to use, but when you pair a script font with a print font, that typically goes really well together. So let's look at this in action. Here's an example of a design that has a script font. You can see that script font across the middle, and then that print font I've used to kind of sandwich in between that script. Now, the script font paired with a print font can look good where it's on top, on the bottom, sandwiched in between. It's totally up to you on what you want to make that look like, but that pair typically looks really good together. Okay, let's dive in to the third font pair. This is where you're using some kind of a skinny font with a very bold font. This is a really fun one. If you have a word or something that you're trying to draw attention to, in your specific design. So let me show you an example of this one. So the bold font in this example is the part that says devoted teacher. And then the skinny font is the little letters across the bottom that say even from a distance. You'll also notice the repetition of the arrows in odd numbers. Again, we're using those same design principles. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to pick your favorite fonts and use those. So we all love to download fonts, right? If you're anything like me, I've got like 2,000 fonts on my computer and I'm still constantly searching for new ones. But y'all, when you're looking at designing, you've got to narrow that down. So make a list of your favorite font designers and stick with them. Typically, their fonts that they're creating mesh really well together, and that will really speed up your entire workflow when you're not trying to sort through thousands of fonts. You've got a handful of ones that you know you love. It will also help your collections to look much more cohesive when they all kind of coordinate together. So now I want to hear from you. I'd love to hear below in the comments which one of those pairs or design rules that you want to try out first. Was it something about odd numbers? Was it something about script and print? You tell me which one of those tips or tricks helped you out and which one you're going to try first. And then make sure to come connect with me over on my website, mydesignsinthechaos.com, and then on all my social media channels, at mydesignsinthechaos. If you have a specific question, feel free to either leave it below or shoot me an email, info at my designs in the chaos.com. And then I will see you back tomorrow for more in our five day design workshop. I'll see you soon. Bye.